Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I was born ready. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life. Today's rambling is, I don't know, we don't do this super often, but I would say that it's a little bit more, not serious, but we're focused in one particular area. I don't think we're going to ramble off of our focus. Focused rambling. This is focused rambling. And I think we just thought that, I don't know, coming into the new year, we're kind of, we're settling into the month of January. And I think that we're at that point where like you've either ditched everything that you said, I'm going to do that in the month of January, or you're really trying to sort some things out. And I think, Angela and I said this, I think for a lot of people, once the reality of anything significant changes or yeah. just affects you and you're aware of, oh, okay, fun and games that are over, then you've either got the confidence and the courage to just blow full steam ahead or you're like, eh, I'm out. This kind of got too hard or I just don't have time and I just don't want to. So today we are talking about confidence and courage. And I know that I look at a lot of people and you do too, Angela, everybody does. We, we look at a lot of people and go, man, I wish I had their confidence mm -hmm. or I wish I was doing what they're doing. You know, my life is boring. I'm not doing anything. So I don't know. I just felt like this would be a good conversation for me and you to have. I think so. And I love that, you know, the book, The Lord is My Courage, that yes. you talked about on the podcast. Yep. I gave several as gifts. People loved it yep. for Christmas. Everybody get it. The it, Lord is My Courage. Yes. And the, it's just been stirring. This is mm -hmm. something that's been stirring, I think, in us. And then as we enter a new year, it's like, what better time? to hype our people up yeah, and talk about courage, but also at the same time, you just hit on it, eliminating comparison. We've got to be so aware yeah. as we're looking at other people, yeah. comparing, you know, am I confident? Am I not? What do I look like? How do I compare to them? Right. Boy, that's a trap we don't want to fall into. Right. Okay. So I, I actually have notes today, y'all. I'm so excited to see if or you, hear. Yes. If you follow us and listen, then you have subconsciously picked up on the fact that Angela comes in with an outline for us and we talk about it a little bit, but you know, it's just so kind of loosey goosey that it, you don't, I personally am not panicked if I have really no idea what we're talking about. But today I wanted to kind of have my mind wrapped around confidence and courage. I think a lot of people look at us, both of us, I look at you and say, she's got so much confidence. I wouldn't dare set foot in a courtroom and say anything to anybody with any kind of authority because I'd be like, I'm sorry, this is not good news, you know. Oh it would just be terrible. <laughs> um, but I know that you could flip it around and say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there's things that you wish that you ha you were more confident in that you see me. I always see you as being so confident and so put together and all these things that, yeah, now you're making that face. It just It's funny how we yeah. see other people. We see those things in them, and then when it's on us, we're like, oh, I don't see me that way. That's interesting. Right. Okay, so we're going to kind of frame this out for everybody, and we're going to start with something that I I read last <laughs> night, and I think it's just a healthy reminder for us that our life, everybody's life belongs to the Lord. This is His. We are His vessels. We are his image bears. We are made to honor and glorify him and live out this gospel. Like our life is his life. It is his. And so what we do, who we are first and foremost, and then what we do with our life, he should be the one directing our steps. He should be the one leading us. Every single one of us could raise our hands and go, we just kind of blow full steam ahead through something. And we're like, oh, I'm not sure if I've even considered mm -hmm. as I'm thinking about who I am and what he's asked of me to do, have I considered the Lord? And so I, I know a scripture, I had to search it for the exact address and it's very familiar to a lot of you all, but it's Psalm 37, 23. And it says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He directs our steps. He directs our steps. He delights in the details of, of our lives. And so that just for me is like, okay, I belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
whatever it is we're going to do in 2023, as simple as it is, complex as it is, somewhat aware, not aware at all, fully aware of what we feel like we're going to do with the Lord. He delights in those details. Follow him, surrender, pray, just give it to him on a daily basis. What do you want out of me that that's requiring the Holy Spirit? Not what I can do within my own self. Mm -hmm. That's where your confidence and your courage is going to come from. Not something I've got to like muster up, but it's all belongs to the Lord and it's coming from him. I love that you started us there because even as you're reading that, I'm thinking back to what I said last, just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And when I make it, when I sound insecure, I'm trying to conjure up, muster up this confidence. Whenever right. I make it about me, that's right. when I start sounding insecure. Right. Well, that's our that's life. our default. That's our natural that default. That is our flesh. We make it about us. Yeah. And, and I think that is the number one sign of am I confident? Am I courageous? Where's my identity? Right. Okay. I I have to ask, and, and, and I know that we're all considering, I don't know. I, I Maybe we said this in the last episode. Maybe it's just us. But I think, I think if we were to be honest with ourselves, we sit and, and ask the Lord, what are we going to do this year? Mm -hmm. Because is it just about getting up and going to work every day and going to the grocery and paying bills and running errands and trying to go to the gym and trying to drink that blasted water? Like, What a terrible life if that's, that's all there is. That's, that's not the gospel. <laughs> that is not... That does not sound like abundant life. No, that is not what he came for. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have to fight daily for what do you want me to do, Lord, mm -hmm. that is more than that? Yes, we've got to do those things. Yes, we want to steward every bit of that well, but we are meant for so much more. And we said last time, last um, couple of episodes ago when we were right after the new year, you know, we prefer a rut. Mm -hmm. We actually do because it's comfortable and it's safe. But our lives are meant to be so much more than I need to eat lettuce today. <laughs> I did eat lettuce last night, but I know that there's more. <laughs> right. I am more than how many apples I eat. That's necessary. Uh, uh -huh. And we want to take care of ourselves. We want to feel good so we can do these things yes. with the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about a thought that I saw this somewhere and who the heck knows where, you know, as you scroll through your phone. Isn't that terrible when you're like, oh man, I want to go back and find it. It's gone forever. Cite the source, iPhone 14. You can't, yeah, you <laughs> cannot find it. You're Sometimes, like, I was just on yes. Instagram. It'll update and your feed is totally different. It's totally the quote different. Is gone. Yeah. And then you're like, dang, I want to go back and find it. <laughs> But it was some video, it was probably a reel or a TikTok, now that I am saying this out loud, but the, the, the purpose of the video was, it showed a girl just standing there doing something in her kitchen, and, and someone asked of her, what brings you joy? What do you love? If you could do anything, what would it be? And she, you know, rattled off these three things, and that person said, then do that. Mm -hmm. And we all sit here and go, yeah. I okay. just want to whine about it. I don't want to actually do it. <laughs> but I mean, what? how do you even start? Mm -hmm. How do you even do that? Okay, so when you hear the word, I did a little, I, I was shocked, not shocked, but I was a little surprised. I didn't find what I thought I was going to find. When you hear the word confidence mm -hmm. or someone that is <laughs> confident, I can come up with that. Okay, like mm -hmm. I, I see a certain certain characteristics. What characteristics do you see when you envision somebody confident? What qualities do you see in that person? Then we're going to talk about the opposite of that because I think we live in the opposite of that. Right, right, right. I think about somebody that, that commands the room, that has a presence, that, that is selfish. Self. Here we go with the word mm -hmm. self. Because that in my mind, I'm thinking control and like self-assured and poised. Not in a bad way. But not in a bad way. Because in a minute. Well, I'm, it can be. People it, can be it, ugly and rude about it. Absolutely. <laughs> or it can just get real fleshy. Right. So I, I think that's the, the irony as I've been thinking about confidence is 
you know, it, it sounds like something from within myself and something I'm in control of, and actually the opposite of that is true, and we'll get into that in a minute. But but when I think about confidence, I just think about somebody that, that looks like they have it all together. Okay, so what do you think the opposite? Give me adjectives. I'm putting you on the spot because okay. this was hard. I mm -hmm. thought I knew, but when I went to search anonyms <laughs> of confidence, I was like, what I thought would be there is not there. So that takes the pressure off. I can basically give wrong answers when I'm in the majority. Um, somebody who's um, maybe fearful or uncertain or mm -hmm. nervous. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. So the, so the opposite. I'm, I'm opposite, intrigued. I can't wait to hear what you said. The opposite of confidence. And I think when you hear these words, you're like, is the, what I want people to consider is, is that me? Mm -hmm. Is that me all the time? Is that me some of the time? Um, or where is that me? Because that's it's, right. it's all of us, I'm sure, to some degree. And, and just in different situations yeah. with different people, different places. Okay, so the opposite of confidence is, these are the words. Okay. According to Miriam's Dictionary, Webster's, whatever. Anonyms. Google. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we came up with. Unsure. Okay. Uncertain. Indecisive. Mm, that's a good one. Hesitant. Doubtful. Ooh, doubt. I was looking for the word because this is how I have identified my life. I was looking for the word insecure. Mm -hmm. It's not in there. It wasn't in there. Interesting. That's and a control then, word. Then I wondered this. You can say nothing about this. I just was wondering then. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? Does confidence come first and then security? Does security come first and then confidence? Those two have to be connected. Mm -hmm. What's the greater umbrella? Do you need confidence first before you can have courage or just courage come first and then you have confidence and security and all of that's just very tangled up mm -hmm. and wound up together. But I think it's important for you. I just have always said, you know, I'm just an insecure person. Which why, is, why do you say that? Well, you, it's, it's just rooted in upbringing and childhood and you know, lack of things. So as you grow, mm -hmm. as your children grow, as you grow as an adult, you're either in environments and with people that are either growing you towards confidence or they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me until my 40s to really understand that I had a voice and I could use that voice, whether I felt like I was qualified to use that voice. So that's very complex, very mm -hmm. deeply rooted in just my entire life. So I know a lot of people understand that and they resonate with that. But then there's some people that are like, no, that was not a thing for me. I've just been confident um, because I had a family that allowed us to do and say and we could fight and wrestle and we loved hard and we fought hard and I don't know. Where do you think you are? Do you think confidence is something that you've grown into? Has it been there your whole life? I think I appreciate more now at 46 years old looking back. Like in elementary school, I was the one that got called on to do the readings you know, okay. in, in front of a crowd. Public okay. speaking has never been, like that comes to mind for me. Like, like you were confidence. not, you weren't afraid of that? I wasn't afraid of okay. it because I just always remember doing it. Yeah. And they just always put me in opportunities. Um, I went to St. Mary's Catholic School and we had mass several times a week and somebody had to do the readings and it just seemed <laughs> like I was always the one. Let's that, pick on Angela. That was like, well, sure, I'll read. So it, it, you know, I I never understood the value in that, but but I'm starting to because mm -hmm. I, I don't look back and think, you know, that that was a fear of mine, yeah. public speaking. And most people would say that's a fear. Not that I don't get nervous. I mean, I, we, I don't know a lawyer alive that doesn't get jittery going in a courtroom. It's right. like the big game. You know, right. it's, it's probably more adrenaline than nerves. But um, I don't, my confidence is not really linked to those kind of examples. Like, I, I think I have more of a positive experience with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I did have parents who affirmed us and, and told us, you know, we were, we were made for great things. And, and I didn't appreciate that 
I don't think, in, until the last few years, really looking back on it. I think my struggle is more, my sister talked about imposter syndrome. Have yeah. you heard of that? Oh, yes. I, you know, and, and just really looking at what that is. But And I think that's what's in my profession. A lot of people just feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't belong here. I'm, I'm not as good as the others. I think law school puts a lot of that in you mm. and just the competitiveness. It's like it pulls out some of the very worst, like, like our strengths become our weaknesses a little yeah. bit because everybody is so good. All of a sudden you've gone from, you know, I was a big fish in a small pond at St. Mary's when nobody else wanted to get in front of people and read. And then all of a sudden you're with everybody who's a genius and you're like, okay, where do I belong oh. and where do I fit in? Mm. So I think mine flipped more older instead of younger, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to untangle anything. You already had a foundation of confidence. And then it got destroyed. Okay. And then it gets destroyed. Yeah. And then what happened? Let me pause here and say this because I don't want to skip past it. I didn't, I don't think I did this with my kids well. You know, I've said many times my parenting is over. I can, I can do this now, but your growing up years are so crucial mm -hmm. as to who you are, that foundation. And so asking your children while they're at home, ask Cole constantly, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. So that they can articulate their thoughts and their feelings and their opinions about something that pulls them into a deeper conversation That's good. And, and not so much sharing facts if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. you're just asking them, what do you think about that? And giving them a safe place to develop their, their voice, yeah, their voice and just their thoughts. And that, I don't know, they've just got some confidence in, in who they are and what they believe mm -hmm. and what they think. And yeah, that's going to change and evolve as they grow. But I just can't imagine what a game changer that is mm -hmm. for a person of any age to be able to contribute. Okay, so what happens when all of that's destroyed? Oh, goodness. Well, I, I think the law school environment, like I said, for me, just really crushed that. Now, granted, my mother had just died. I was very young. I was a newlywed. I was commuting to school. None of it made sense. I knew I wanted to be an attorney. I knew I didn't have a plan B in my mind, but I was drowning in school. I was drowning in a new environment. I was trying to perform mm -hmm. and keep up mm -hmm. and rely on all the things that I'd always done well and none of it was working for me. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I, I mean, I, I cried and prayed in the bathroom more than anywhere else at law school and just told the Lord, if you want me to do this, you've got to do it. Yeah. And he did. I mean, that's that's a quick version of that story. Well, I mean, let's go back to the scripture. He delights. Yeah. He delights in those details of shaping you and forming you and growing you into who he knows you can be. And it felt like a, I don't want to say a sledgehammer <laughs> because it was a sweet time with the Lord, but it felt like I could, I can literally point to that as him molding me. Mm -hmm. and it's painful. It was so painful, but he was right there. Yeah. And he was so sweet and kind and tender with me and how we walked through that together mm -hmm. in a way that I couldn't forget it. I can't not talk about it. I can't talk about my career and leave him out of it because I wouldn't be here. Like there is no doubt in my mind without right. him, I wouldn't be here. And I've had a great career of helping people. And I know he put me in that spot, Right. but it really, when I talk about confidence, like there is no way I can even have that conversation without pointing to having to learn and cling to who I am because of him right. and him alone. Well, our identity I've said a thousand times, our identity in Christ, if that is not something that you are rooted in and it's being nourished and fed and growing, then you are going to constantly mm -hmm. operate out of self and try to come up with on your own. Yes, we, mm -hmm. we do have an active role in this. We don't just sit back and go, okay, Lord, it's all you. Mm -hmm. Like we have to move with him. Yep and lean into who we are and who he is and start moving forward in some direction. You picked mm -hmm. yourself up. You picked your, You could have said, you know what, I'm done. Yeah. This is too much, this is too hard. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about law school or you're talking about anything. Anything at all. Anything at all. And I think that that's, I think that's where people get hung up is I don't want them to listen to this and go, oh my gosh, y'all have a podcast or you're an attorney 
or you've got, you know, work in a university and whatever people mm -hmm. think about us, we still have to choose every single mm -hmm. day. I'm going to step into that scenario for me. It is knowing that I am smart. Mm -hmm. I can use my voice appropriately. I do have thoughts and ideas and opinions that matter. I am a good leader. And so I can easily shrink back from that and feel so not brave. And just the, that fear just rises to the top so fast. And so I want people to know whatever it is, whoever you are, we all are battling this mm -hmm. every single day. Every one of us, every one of us. Can I share something? Absolutely. Um, that I read just yesterday. I, I told y'all a few episodes ago about my new favorite book. I want to say, don't look at the title and tell us what the title is. I know. Because yesterday I, I was so tickled. I fumbled all over it. I have to read it. Praying like monks, living like fools. Or, as you said yesterday, living like monks and praying <laughs> like fools. You know, <laughs> we, there's a little monk inside of all of us, right? We hope, maybe, and, and definitely a fool is there, too. <laughs> But this is Somebody's going to go to Amazon right now and type in the words fool and monk. Foolish monks. <laughs> oh, it'll pop up. I it'll, guarantee it'll you. It'll pop up. And I'm listening to it on Audible. Yes. And I'm going to do that. Yes. And the guy that, um, if, you've, if you've seen the little Gospel Project videos that go do the overview of every book of the Bible. With the Bible recap. With the Bible recap. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's Tim Mackey. Um, yeah, he's a pastor, and I heard this voice in the forward. I was like, I know this voice. Who is this man? It was him. You do the cartoons for it's us. It's the cartoon man. Bible cartoons. The Bible cartoon man is friends with this author. This book is so good, and listening to him read it in his voice has just been incredible. But he, t as I was thinking about courage and confidence, uh, I was reading this in chapter two where he's saying, you know, we have to remember who God is to us and remember who we are to him and then who we are to each other, which mm -hmm. is, you know, just love God, love people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's it. Mm -hmm. But he, he was talking about in Genesis when, you know, Eve is tempted and, and the serpent says, did God really say, yeah. you know, and plants that doubt. We've talked about that several times on the podcast. And he said, he's not asking Eve to eat the fruit. He's chipping away at her trust mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there's something else going on here that's technical, but it's also very important. In Genesis 2, God is repeatedly called Yahweh Elohim, which means Lord God in English. But every time the serpent refers to God, he just says Elohim, which means God. The abstract name for divinity, dropping the personal mm. part of God's name. And he gave the example of calling someone by their title mm. instead of their name. It's, it's like saying, attorney, yes. attorney. My kids don't say <laughs> Mrs. Snyder. They call me mom, yeah. right? And, and if, you know, doctor's kids don't call them doctor whoever. They mm -hmm. call them dad. Mm -hmm. He said um, it's respectful but distant and depersonalized. Mm. The more intimacy in a relationship, the less likely someone is to be known by a title. And, and he said, you know, my kids don't call me pastor. They call me dad. The serpent subtly demotes God mm. from father to a distant, stingy dictator. Mm. Mighty in power, sure, but unknowable and untrustable. Wow. And it just really struck me. You know, he God is so, so good. And when we reclaim that goodness mm -hmm. and the fact that he is commanding our reverence, absolutely. If you're starting over in the Bible... You know, we're in, in Genesis, and God is so reverent and, and commands that of us. But he calls us his children. Yeah. All throughout the Old Testament, they're taught, you know, everything is reverent and arm's length. And yeah. then the veil's torn, and it's come, come yeah. in my lap like little kids. Yeah. And when, when the devil can get right there and make him cold and distant and impersonal, it, it just, it really, it rattles us to the core in all these things about confidence and courage. I read back through my prayer journal um, the other night again, um, and you you catch something different every time. And so I don't know. Oh wait, I did. It was last January. This must have come out of a sermon. I'm not sure the context, but I wrote down. I heard from somewhere um, that fear is rebellion. Oh, that's good. So we have to trust the Lord in all mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. He will not just guide us, but as we step out, he will be the one that helps us with this courage, with this confidence. 
You know, we've heard many people say lots and lots of times, yeah, I may, I may be brave and I may have some courage to do something new, but that doesn't mean I'm not scared. Do it scared. And, and the yeah. other thing too, um, I've used this example before. It's not my own example, um, but you, you, you're going to hear this again from me because I love it. It's a beautiful illustration that everybody understands. We live in a culture, whatever it is the Lord is asking you to do, we live in a culture, imagine the pancakes that you're making on Saturday morning. You know that first pancake is just not right. <laughs> it's your guinea pig pancake. Mm -hmm. But the third pancake, you're like, this is good. Queen of pancakes. Queen, like I want all the pancakes to look like this one. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a, t it takes a minute and so we have to be okay with stepping out with the Lord in whatever it is he's trying to grow in us so that we can live the abundant life that he has for us. We've got to be okay with that weird first pancake, that weird, that's not great looking. It may not even taste right. It, it's just, it's not perfect. We have to be okay with that. But you keep going because we trust him. Mm -hmm. We cannot live in this state of fear. We just can't. One of my favorite, favorite episodes we did last year was with Sharon Hottie Miller. Yes. <laughs> On control. If yeah. you miss that or if you just need a refresher, it is worth going back yeah. and listening to her words about and get our the need book. for control. And get, get the, the book. book. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. But that and control is an illusion but the minute i step into the driver's seat and try and that's that's my natural default i think a lot of us can relate to that and if you think you don't have control issues reading her book will show you that in fact you do right. and what that looks like which is ultimately lack of trust mm -hmm. and i don't and i'm fearful i'm fearful i'm afraid i yeah i and especially, you know, it, it's one thing to talk, you know, abide is prettier than surrender. Yes. When you talk about words, if anybody's yeah. got those one words for the year. But it, with our kids, with our people, it really gets hard. But I've, I've tried to, um, I've tried to do a couple of things, Fran. I took your advice on the, the podcast that came out the new year where you were talking about just sitting in the, the wonder and the silence and, and he talked about that in this book, the, the Foolish Monk, <laughs> Monk Fool book. He said, and, and I, I did this the last couple of days, I literally set a timer on my phone mm -hmm. for two minutes. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't, I'm constantly opening one eye going, has it been five minutes or one minute? <laughs> like, this feels like forever. It is so... It's painful. Even in my prayer life, I want to do all the talking. That, yeah. is, that is revealing things in me. But we live in a society that that almost makes you feel bad yeah for just sitting and just being in the wonder of god I struggle and just that. letting your brain not do anything i don't know how to do that and i'm having to learn mm -hmm. so so the past and and it was just literally like i was i was in my mind going i'm exhaling my anxiety i'm inhaling the peace of yeah. the lord like i just I, I would just and then i thought you know what angela stop talking and listen <laughs> Even, even just like the voice in my head, it was like, "Will you just hush?" Well, how in the, to the world, Lord? How in the world can we move forward courageously with confidence in the Lord, not in ourselves, but what He wants to do with us? If we can't listen to Him for crying out loud, I know. And He said, "Start with a minute or two, and then every month." Th mm. This is a slow enough you know, easy enough goal that I'm working toward it. But he was like, don't jump into 10 minutes. Oh yeah. That's a hundred you know, minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like, like get add, add a minute or two each month. But that really is something I want to incorporate into my new year. And then as, as I was praying about it later, I was like, Lord, you got to help me do this. Yeah. I don't know how to shut my big mouth. Yeah. I, I want you to be in control. And I thought, you know, I, th this is the visual I have for me in this coming year is I don't want to be in the driver's seat. I want the Lord in the driver's seat. And I don't even want to be given advice. I don't want to be the one, you know, theoretically, like looking at the GPS, suggesting right. the route. Right. I'm trying really hard to let him drive the car mm -hmm. and surprise me with where we're going. That's right. And and keep my opinions and my, yeah. and of course we participate in it, but I'm not being still and quiet long enough to even let him lay out the plan. Right. I'm, I'm jumping in with right. So, yeah. Okay, let's end with the verse that we started with. I love it. Because we could talk about this for 1,600 hours. This is so good. But it gets people thinking. Mm -hmm. 
because what I want to see people do, well, I'm not going to be able to see people do this, but what I want to encourage people to do is may 2023 be the year that you look back on and go, holy cow. Yes. Look what me and the Lord did together. Adventurously oh, expectant. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Psalm 37, 23 says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of our lives. Every detail. Every detail. All this wonkety, weird, fun, adventurous, glorious stuff. Okay. This was fun. Thanks, everybody. For real. Let Wait. us know. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think about confidence and courage and what you're struggling with. Because, listen, we're all there. We're all in it together. Yes, we're we better are. We're better together. Better together. I hope this blessed you and encouraged you. We love you guys so much. Thanks for listening to another episode of Rambling Through Everyday Life with Brandon Angela. That flew by. I was afraid you were.